So far we've looked at um, how we can use supply and demand to explain the price of um, goods and services. So we've looked at how we determine the price of oil, how we determine the price of houses and so on. Well, one way in which we can use supply and demand actually is also to look at um, the idea of labour markets. Yeah, so um, actually, yeah, in a weird sort of way, yeah, people people are bought and sold. In, in, not, 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 not quite in that way, but but in the sense that you know, um, yeah, there is a price for labour, um, and and the price for labour is the wage that you're paid, um, yeah, for for, go, for going to work. Yeah, so what we can say is that. You know, we know that some people earn much higher wages than others. Well, well why, how, how do we explain that? And the answer is we can explain it using um, supply and demand. So what determines what determines the demand for labour? And this is something that you want to get straight, yeah, because people always tend to view this view this the wrong way around. So who who is dipping? Yeah, so so I am a teacher. Um, yeah, therefore, yeah, um, yeah, um, th there is demand for me. So who demands Simon? The answer is Dover Brooks demands Simon. Yeah, so the demand for labour it comes from firms. So why is it that firms need workers? They need workers to yeah to produce goods and services. So in my case, yeah, the reason that Dover Brooks need me is that you're at Dover Brooks. So all we can say is that the, de the, the demand for labour is what we call, it is a derived demand. And what derived demand means, yeah, is that it comes from something else. So, <coughs> so you, as students, demand Doverbrooks, as a result of which Doverbrooks demands me. Yeah, um, or, or you can see that in other markets as well. So because yeah, because yeah, because there is the demand for steak yeah um, to eat <coughs> yeah at restaurants, um, restaurants then demand cows yeah. <coughs> so too yeah, so it's where a derived demand is where the demand for one thing leads to a demand for the other. So what what determines what determines the demand for me? Um, so yeah, what are they? What what yeah? What are the factors um, affecting demand? For labour, which I'll call DL. Well, obviously, one one thing that's going to affect me affect it is is the wage. Yeah, what we can say is that yeah, if we say that the wage per hour, if we say that's the price, yeah, and this is the quantity of labour that's demanded. Well, other things being equal, as as wages rise, firms won't be able to employ um, as many workers um, as they did before because we're not going to add enough value. Yes, yeah, so what we might say is that at a low wage down here at W one, firms can afford to employ lots of workers, and as the price of labour goes up to W two, there's a contraction. In demand, yeah, fewer firms, yeah, fewer firms can uh, afford to, to employ workers, or, or firms realise that it's just it's just not worth it. Yeah, so uh, at, at this higher wage, yeah, these workers, we would argue, these ones here, which we call X, yeah, those those X workers there, they're not adding enough value, yeah, to be able to, to be to be worth employing. Yeah, so. The point is that it's only worth Doverbrook's employing me um, if they get more from me than they pay me. Yeah? I mean, they're a profit-making organisation. So it's only worth employing somebody, it's only worth demanding them if the value that they add is greater than the, than the wage that they're paid. So changes in wages are going to cause movements along, extensions and contractions in demand. So what could cause, what could cause you know, the demand to shift? Well, that's the other things that affect the demand for labour, yeah? So yeah, so if we look at yeah, if we look at kind of um, shift factors, then that's anything apart from wage. So it could be, for example, yeah, the price of machinery. Yeah, um, so if machinery becomes cheaper, it may well be the case that firms will switch um, away from labour and towards yeah, to, towards machinery. That would cause demand to shift inwards to the left, or it could be. It could be the state of the economy, because that determines how many workers the firm's actually going to need. Yeah? So in, in the coronavirus crisis, yeah, the demand for labour in restaurants 
at a, you know, at a given wage, you know, when the economy is doing well, they demand lots of workers. You know, um, but during the crisis, nobody's going out to restaurants. Therefore, firms don't need so many workers you know, and demand shifts in. So anything that affects firms' willingness and ability to employ workers, you know, then that's going to cause a shift in demand. So movements along are caused by wages. Shifts are caused by any factor other than wage. The same as with demand curves.